My name is James Jansen, and the reason we built this bus, we had the house just to the south of us. It was a 4,000 square foot house, and it became a lot of work to maintain. We named the bus Wonderkind, and that's very personal. There was a little girl that died while we were there, and she embodied this uh, name, Wonderkind. You would need to go to the um, to the song, listen to the song Wonderkind, and you'll understand why we uh, named this bus Wonderkind. But yeah, this is our bus. We think it's amazing. We love li living in it, and if you want to, we can come on in and take a look around. We absolutely love this kitchen. I'm sorry my wife isn't here. She's out of town. She could really brag it up for you. But maybe the one thing we have that is totally unique in a bus is a commercial kitchen. We have a three sink commercial kitchen and my wife absolutely loves this. Without a dishwasher, there's no place to put your dirty dishes, but in this, you hide your dirty dishes under here. You have these covers that you can move around so you lose no, no counter space whatsoever. And then the washing, like your prep, it's all right here. You wash your um, meat, vegetables, whatever, clean it off. It's all, it works great. The other thing we have is walnut countertops, which we love. My wife is a big baker. She's got two commercial uh, mixers under here, which we'll show you later. The one thing that we really like, well, I should say my wife likes, is this um, spice rack. And the way we designed this, or I designed it, was to have all her spices that she uses regularly right here in the front. And then any spice that's not here will be inside. You open this up, it swings out and you have all the spices then visual right here. Another thing we have in here, that I don't know if you can see this or not, but the um, drawer pulls, turquoise drawer pulls, I built those myself. Just uh, drilled holes in the back of a rock and put them on there. One thing that's really interesting we put in was a full-size fridge. In fact, my wife wanted the biggest fridge she could find. <laughs> it was really interesting when we got it in here, or when we really started to measure it out, we, we realized that when you open this door, it would hit a regular uh, cabinet. So we, we made this cabinet smaller. This is our coffee bar. But in the end, it was better. And this is one thing I want to encourage you in. Do not be afraid of making mistakes. Oftentimes, mistakes end up being better than the original. And what we did here is we narrowed this up. And what that does is it opens this whole kitchen area up. So when you come in here, if this was out to two feet, cabinet, this would feel really quite constricted. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. The mistakes oftentimes turn out to be better than the original. I'll show you another mistake in the, in the bathroom that turned out to be better than the original. But yeah, full-size stove. This stove is a commercial, home commercial stove. But the reason we did this, we, we live in here full-time. We plan on living in here from now on. My wife is a big baker. I wish y'all could try our bread. And uh, that's something we did not want to do, uh, do without. This, is, this identifies us as who we are and the life we live. We love people. We love to have people over. We love to cook. And we did not want to give that up even though we live in a bus. First question is, where did this idea come from? I am a builder. I say I have obsess obsessive compulsive building disorder. I've always got to be building something, and I love to go from one thing to the next. Um, I've always wanted to build a bus. We actually built campers for a number of years. Uh, we built like six campers, sold them. But we had a 4,000 square foot house, a huge shop, and the maintenance of all that was just getting too much. And with the price of real estate like it is, we decided it was the right time to sell. We sold the property and we retained the shop for four months, which the people that bought the place were very generous. And we were in there actually for probably a month more. We probably took five months to build the bus. But we wanted to downsize, but we also wanted the ability to move around. We have four daughters. All four daughters live at different places. We wanted to be able to move around, be with them. Also, I built a boat, which is an amazing boat, but it's an offshore boat. We want to spend our springs in southern Louisiana fishing for tuna. And uh, yeah, we want to pull our boat, 
boat down to Louisiana with our bus and spend um, the springs, which in Colorado, the springs are awful. The south, the springs are amazing. So yeah, we'd like to spend our springs in Louisiana fishing. But yeah, that's kind of the inspiration for the bus. But we are finding that we love, absolutely love living in a smaller space. This is our bathroom bedroom area. There's one thing we did that I don't know if I've ever seen in a bus, and that is we only have two rooms in our bus. We have one wall, this wall with the door. And the reason we did that is because most buses that I see, they have a hallway, it cuts their space down and it's wasted space, and they end up with small, tight spaces. We didn't want that. We wanted a roomy feel. And by putting our bathroom and bedroom together, it opens up both the bathroom and the bedroom, which we really like. This is storage that we put in that was, um, yeah, just for your linens and stuff. And we were actually thinking of putting in a washer and dryer. After we realized how much water a washer uses, how much electricity a dryer uses, we realized it was not feasible. But we are very thankful we did not put in a washer and dryer. This is amazing storage of all kinds of junk, which you can see. This is a great place for coats. In the summertime, I'm sure we'll find other things to put there. But I said earlier about a mistake that ended up better. This shower is a prime example. But what happened is we ordered our tile, which we wanted the black and white tile, which I, turned, I think turned out looking nice. But with the supply chain issues that are um, going on, they back ordered some of our tile. And so when we started laying this, we realized we were not going to have enough tile. So we go to town and we say, what will match? And we ended up with this stone. And in the end, it gave a detail to this shower that uh, really was much better than the original. Do not, I repeat, do not overstress about uh, bumps in the road. I say every problem is an opportunity and most of the things that I've done in life that were amazing were because of a problem. Do not overstress about the problems you, you hit in the build process. But we didn't like the shower because it was too small. So what I did is I moved it out four inches from the wall both ways and then I bumped it in or bumped it out here four inches. And what it does is it gives you more room in your shower but also it gives you storage. Again, think about how you can utilize what you have expand on it, and actually it becomes better than the original. On my shower wall, the way I did this, I actually had these two glass panels, and um, the way I mounted this on the wall, I used half-inch plexiglass. This is quarter-inch uh, uh, glass, and I grooved the quarter-inch, the, the half-inch plexiglass and screwed it on the wall, put my uh, silicone caulk in, shove the glass in, and that's what holds the glass into the wall. On this, I used also half-inch plexiglass, but it was really flimsy. So then I bought this, um, this little brass angle iron, and I screwed that onto my plexiglass and attached that to the ceiling. So that makes this really quite strong. This is another, this plexiglass door is, um, another piece of scrap that I had. And again, I just screwed it on. You close it, it's got a little latch on it. And uh, that's how that works. This is a bed. It's a queen size bed. We thought about putting a king size in, but hey, don't need that. And we needed the storage. You always need storage in a bus. But the height of this is due to the fact of the motor is in the back. And so everything was based off the height of the motor. I do have all of my plumbing, all of my water in the heated space. We live in cold country, it gets down to 20 below zero here. And this bus is designed for 20 below. So everything is enclosed, our water tank, we got a 120 gallon water tank, it's underneath here. My wife's clothes are in this drawer. Now, this is something, this is one of my favorite things in this whole bus, and that is this closet. Uh, I am a big, big fan of full extension glides. You can get wonderful 500 pound full extension slides. They go out to 60 inches, maybe, maybe more. Has a latch on it, you pull it out, and this is the closet. 
So you don't have to climb on the bed to access your closet. You pull it out, lots of amazing storage, thanks to full extension slides. I love full extension slides. Okay, so this is the pot behind here. And I designed this door so when it's open, you do not see the business end of this. But when you close this door, you access the commode. And we have a Cinderella uh, incinerating toilet, which we absolutely love. It works great. Does use gas, but I figured up how much gas it uses. Very little, really. Uh, if you put in a septic system, it will take 50 years of gas to pay for a septic system. So that puts it kind of into perspective of what the actual cost is of running a Cinderella gas toilet. This is our dining area, and we took out the door, the entrance here. Most buses, this is kind of wasted space. You come up through the door, and, and this, is, this space is wasted. So what we did is we took the door out, put the floor in level, and this is our dining area. The reason we really, really like this dining area, it utilizes this space, first of all. And the second is, it is a natural um, picture window. So when you sit down here, you have windows on the right, in front, and on the left. You have a panoramic view, and it's just an amazing place to, uh, to eat. This table actually comes up, and we store it when we drive, and it just pops in here. And, uh, and this is where we have, this is where we eat. My wife is also a plant lover, so it gives her a place to put a few of her plants, and yeah, they do great. Okay, on this mini split, most people struggle with their drain. And I'll admit, I struggled a while, and I tried to come up with something that was simple, which I love, I love simple. So, simple and fast, that's my mantra. This is the drain, this little pipe right here. I just put it right in front of the window split and it actually works very well. It's very easy to install and it's something that you do not even know that's there. It's, it really works great. I wanna talk about our living area here. One thing that we struggled with was the seating. Actually, I built a bench here to start with and we didn't like that. When you have friends over, you don't wanna all just sit on a bench. So we went to another type of a chair. They were too bulky. And this is what we settled on. We settled on office chairs. They are very movable. They're adjustable. You can adjust the height. They're very comfortable. Another thing is this is my desk, so I can take this chair over here to my desk. I put my computer on here and I can work here. So it's multifunction. When you're building in a small space, you have to think about size of your furniture. You have to think about multifunction, but you don't want to give up uh, your comfort either. This is probably one of my favorite things in this whole bus is this door. It's one piece of solid plexiglass. I put this piece of wood on this plexiglass and actually I bowed this wood. I cut it in a taper so that when you open and close this door, the top and bottom hit first and then it flexes the plexiglass in and closes. So that gives it a seal all the way down. This this hardware is the original um, casement window hardware. It comes from Europe, and they, this was the original hardware. I actually bought this hardware from Europe. I bought it off of eBay, bought like 20 of them, and I paid probably 100 bucks for 20 solid brass um, hardwares. But anyway, the way this works is this just uh, pops out, and then you have different, you can set your window at different places. So you can have it cracked open or all the way open. It's very easy. And then when you close it, it um, actually works on a fulcrum. So you close this. I have these pins on a little cable so I don't lose them. And you put pressure on the, the, um, on the lever and it puts pressure on the window and then it's sealed. It works really well, very simple, bulletproof, and you don't ever have to worry about it breaking. It's forever hardware. I would say the roof raise was probably the easiest thing I did. The hat channel is uh, one inch wide and approximately two inches deep. So what I did is I took one by two tubing and I welded the tubing in the bottom of the hat channel. 
I, I welded those in, four of those in at different places, so the bus, the roof couldn't go anywhere but straight up. And I welded them on the bottom and left the top loose so it could slide up on the top. I put jacks front and back and we just jacked it up. It probably took uh, an hour to jack them up. And when I was up 16 inches, I had the one by two tubings that I'd cut that was gonna be full length. And I welded them in inside the hat channel. It worked amazing, worked well. And in, uh, yeah, I would say a day. It took me a day to raise the roof. And what I did for my side walls, I raised it the exact amount so a four foot sheet of tin would fit on the sidewall. So I did not have to recut my tin. I just raised it the exact amount and I just uh, slipped my tin in and welded it in on. So yeah. The other thing we did in here that's completely different is stucco. And the way we did this is we stripped the walls with one by two. Then I just nailed a stucco lath over that. I used the, the heavier stucco lath. You don't use chicken wire, you use actual, the V-type stucco lath. It's stiffer, it, it uh, spans your, your uh, spaces better. And I just nailed that on and just stuccoed it. And actually I used the formula that they use for ferro cement, which is what's used for sailboats. And we have driven this some, not a lot, but we have really rough roads around here. We have a lot of washboards. We've driven over quite a bit of twisting type situations getting our bus in here, and we have not seen the first crack. One of the main reasons I, I did the stucco, I like fast and easy. Don't forget that, I like fast and easy. The other thing is, is the curves of the bus. If you will notice the curves in a bus, uh, when you work with square members on curves, it's very difficult. And where the curves of the bus are, and also like going up into my, my uh, roof uh, hatch where you go up, you'll see that, that that all just make nice smooth transitions with stucco. Also where the roof raise was, and you work with uh, multiple uh, curves and angles, it's very difficult to use wood to, uh, to make those. And stucco is just an organic material, works very well, it, it just, it just takes on the the shape of whatever you're working with. It was really easy to do. It was ended up amazing. Then over the stucco, we did this in our house <clears throat> that we built. But over the stucco you use um, you use sheetrock mud. Over uh, cement works amazing. So you just put one coat of stucco on and then you use sheetrock mud and you just go over to your stucco with sheetrock mud and that fills in all the voids and cracks and you can give it one or two coats. Well, I think we put two coats of sheetrock mud over our stucco. And then the last coat, what we did is we just uh, put on a coat of sheetrock mud and while the mud is wet, you just go over with your hand and just, just swirl it. And then after it dries just a little bit, you just hit that with a, with a trowel and it'll knock that so you don't see your hands, but it does give it a texture that gives it a real southwestern look. And that I have found very, very easy, fast, and it ends up looking really good. You don't have to put on a bunch of coats of stucco and labor away at trying to get your stucco to look good. Put your stucco on, then go to sheetrock mud. It's an amazing combination. This is actually um, folds down. This is our our desk, it folds down, gives you a little more room. Like when we have guests over, set extra chairs in here, gives you a little more room. But then I've got a ladder under here that I built. And the way you do this is you pull it out. It goes up here on the, in this opening. And it looks light, but it's actually fiberglassed on the back. I got it all fiberglassed together, so it's extremely strong. And then you climb the ladder onto the roof. Okay, we're up here on the patio. I did something a little different here on the patio. A lot of people, they use boards like slats. I didn't do that. I used three quarter inch plywood and then we rolled on a silicone roofing. I am absolutely in love with silicone roofing. Silicone roofing does not deteriorate <coughs> from the sun and um, once you get it on, it's a lifetime roof. I put uh, full extension slides, 500 pound full extension slides on my drawers. 
three drawers along this wall. One, two, and I have two more on the other side. Now this one, you pull it all the way out, and then we have um, sealed bins inside of these drawers. So we have four bins this size. We have two bigger uh, bins and four small bins in each drawer. And these are waterproof, dustproof bins. You push them shut. I have another one there. And then I have this to latch it. It actually is just a simple latch that goes in here like this. Slips in there like that. And then I have padlocks that go in there. And then you lock it. And that's what keeps it in while you're driving. We have um, eight 345 watt solar panels. Four of them are mounted solid on the roof and the other four are on hinges. And the way you take these down is this pin pulls out. And then this comes down like this. And then this pin pulls out. This comes off. And then this pins into here. So that pins in there and then it is um, solid on the wall for driving down the road. We are on 100% solar. We've never had a problem with our solar. We've got 2,700 watts of solar capacity. We have two uh, 270 amp hour Battleborn batteries. So that's 540 amp hours of storage. We do heat this with a little uh, mini split, a Mitsubishi uh, mini split, works great. And uh, yeah, it, it's just, it just, it sold us on solar. We absolutely love our solar system. And I don't think we will ever going ever go back, even if we would build a house, I don't think we would ever go back to being on grid. Really the uh, solar systems today are uh, amazing. And, but here's the one thing, it, there is a real learning curve to putting in a solar system. It's the one thing I struggled with the most. I made several mistakes. I had to go back and change some things, but do it the second time. It really isn't that complicated. If you can get somebody that has done it and you can get them to help you, it'd be very beneficial because there is some real pitfalls in putting in a solar system. And I learned that from experience. I could have, uh, yeah, it could have been disastrous, but we won't go into that right now. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been disastrous. The way we designed our kitchen, the way we designed this bus, it accommodates us and what we like. That's one thing I would highly recommend. Think about what you want out of life. What is important to you? And then as you build your bus out, you build your tiny house, you build your small space, prioritize. I say this, what you do before you start building, this is getting in the philosophy of building. I built all my life. So make a list one to 10. And in life, you can't have everything. Face it. I mean, accept it. You can't have everything. It's impossible. So make a list one to 10 and then start knocking off the things, the, one, the, the lower things, knock those off until your needs and your abilities meet. That's what you build. Know your limits but don't be afraid. And there are resources out there. There are people out there. I'm one of those. I love to help people. I'd love to help you uh, accomplish what you want to accomplish. I am passionate about people living without a mortgage. And my vision for the future is I would love to help people that have a few funds, a little money, but do not have the knowledge. I would like to help them to experience or to break out of this rent uh, mortgage bondage. And what I would really like to do, and maybe some of you out there can help me with this, but I would like to figure out a way where I could use my shop. You could come here. I would help you with my knowledge and help you build now, as far as monetizing this, I don't know. It doesn't work to just always give. You have to have an income. And how to monetize this, I'm not sure. Um, maybe a GoFundMe, I, I don't know. Maybe somebody out there has a better understanding of how all this works than I do. But yeah, that's what I would like to do. I would love to give back. I have a lifetime of building experience. I've built all kinds of structures. 
I love to build, I love to help people, and I would love to help different ones. I'd like to help you with your build, uh, but yeah, how to make this all work, I'm not sure. We're gonna have a wonderful shop here, shop slash living area. That's going to be amazing, and uh, it's going to be, yeah, I would love to help others along the way. When you're willing to give back to your community, to your people, the, especially the younger people, uh, they hug your neck and they make you feel special. I love that. Okay, thanks for watching this little uh, tour. I uh, am glad to tell you what I'm doing. If you want to follow what we do in the future, I am going to be building the shop it's going to be unique and interesting. I think you'll be interested in it. Uh, you can follow that on Instagram. Actually, I have my bus build on my Instagram account. My Instagram account is james.jansen, and you spell the last name J-A-N-T-Z-E-N. -E and uh, yeah, if you want to follow along, that's great. If you want to contact me, that'd be the place to do it. So yeah, look forward to um, seeing more of you in the future.